Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller doing your Monday Sana Q&As. This is another question I've got from someone. She says, thank you so much for your awesome work. You're an inspiration. I have a question if you could please answer. I was in a seven year relationship with a narcissist and was recently discarded. I was left as a single mom with two small children. He has a pattern of moving fast in relationships. Is it wrong of me to not want another woman around my children? I know none of his relationships will last and I don't want a bunch of strange people around my kids. After studying all of the characteristics of a narcissist, it seems to me he has all of them. So is it wrong of me to want to protect my kids? So no, honey, it's not wrong of you, but here's the dealio, okay? You have no control over that. Okay, unless this person has a track record of being physically abusive, there is no court that's going to allow that to happen. You know, you're, you're not going to be able to control what happens when your kids are in the custody of their father or the other parent. You know, for those of you who are listening to this who are men, who are having the same fear, you know, that your ex, the abusive person was a woman, She's, you know, constantly got new men. She's bringing them around the kids. Same kind of scenario, right? The reality is you have no control over that. You don't. And if you try to control that, you're going to look like the bad person. You're going to look like the manipulator. Now, here's what I would suggest. Again, I am not a mama. I am only trying to put myself in your shoes, knowing what I know about how narcissists behave and what the reality of the situation is, you know, since you can't control who he's going to expose to your kids, I would foster an open environment of sharing with your kids. Now, you said your kids are really little. Okay, I don't know how old they are. I don't know if they're able to start expressing themselves yet, but they will be more and more. And it's shocking how incredibly succinct and expressive kids can be. I mean, they can just drop a truth bomb, like unreal. And you're like, wow, you didn't even think he was paying attention, you know, or she was paying attention. And that's how much they get. Like kids really get a lot more than we give them credit for. So chances are the kids already know, you know, something's not right. So if you don't put on, you know, this air of being controlling and manipulative and wanting, you know, this stuff, you know, to happen just how you want it and you let it be whatever it is when they're with him and when they come back, you're happy to see your kids, you're really excited to hear all about their experiences, okay? And just foster this open sharing environment where your kids feel safe and respected and supported and non-judged right that they can go ahead and share things now you might hear some things that you don't like meaning they might really like your ex's new girlfriend they might really like her and maybe they only like her for a period of time or maybe they really like this person because maybe that person isn't all that bad maybe she's another codependent who got hooked into this guy just like you did right so think about that for a minute you know, and, and the other thing is that, you know, just keeping this, this environment open so that they share things with you. Maybe someday the kids get there and they're like, you know, mama, I really didn't like that daddy's new girlfriend is treating me like this and she did this and she said that. You better be documenting all of that because, you know, if something serious is going on, then you need to get in touch with your legal representative. You need to get back to family court. You need to adjust the custody agreement. But if nothing like that is happening, then it's out of your hands. There's nothing you can do about whatever is going on when the kids are with your ex. You know, again, unless I said, like I said, unless something seriously abusive is happening. And unfortunately, the courts quite often don't recognize the psychological abuse. They only recognize the physical abuse, you know, or the neglect. So if anything like that is happening, I would write that all down. Even the verbal abuse, I would write it down, you know, and, and it might be that you have to keep a lot of this information in order to be able to do something legally to change things. I would document everything, but the only way you're going to be able to get that information from your kids is if you don't approach it like this, right, and you approach it openly, right and you you allow them to have their experience and you respect that they're exploring things and that there's a possibility that they could learn something awesome 
from one of those women and you got to understand that 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 woman whoever's in his life and the next and the next and the next they're not your competition mama you are the mama okay they're not going to be the new mama of your kids they're not your competition they're probably not even going to stay with that guy very long knowing who he is okay they're going to figure it out too just like you did and yeah, it's sad that a bunch of strange people are going to be in your kid's life, but the reality is that you probably can't do anything about that. And if you try to, when there's no actual documentation of abuse going on, you're going to look like the bad person. You're going to look like the parent who's trying to keep the kid from the other parent, you know, or trying to control this, the other parent and their free will and their free life. Like they're free to do whatever they want. They're free to date whoever they want. You know, and if the kids are with that person and, and your ex makes the judgment that he's going to allow his new girlfriends to hang out with your kids, you know, then that's the way it is. Like I said, the best thing to do is just keep the channel of communication open with your kids, document everything as things come up, you know, document your kids' moods. Do your kids come back super anxious? Are they really anxious? Are they terrified? You know, did they come back with like a plummeted sense of self-worth or self-respect? Those are all important things to note, you know, and I wouldn't hesitate to contact your legal representative if that stuff starts to escalate. But understand that, you know, in the meanwhile, this is probably going to be a learning lesson for you in letting go, you know, and in not controlling that and not controlling your ex. Right, because that's one part of codependency is when you try to control the other person. Right, you try to fix them, you try to heal them, you try to control them so that they stop abusing you. But the reality is you have no control over anybody else. The only control you have is over yourself and your own choices and actions. So don't react to that. Don't react to the impulsive part of you that wants to get angry, that feels jealous, that's afraid of the competition of this woman or just the fact that there are other strange people in his life. I mean, he could have all of his friends there. His friends might be a much worse you know, influence on those kids than the woman he's dating. So think about that you know, and recognize how much of that is your own fears and jealousies right, that are coming up and, you know, it's, it's natural when you've been triangulated in a relationship with a narcissist, right? You were programmed to have jealousy of the competition, but recognize that's not your competition, okay? So ask yourself, you know, when you, when you feel like, oh, like so frustrated and upset, you just wanna like react to that. Stop, don't react, take a deep breath, take several deep breaths, maybe go take several minutes to yourself and ask yourself like, how would my higher self respond to this situation? How would my higher self respond to this? That's the action that you want to take. Not that immediate reactive reaction. That's what he would love to. He would love for you to look like the bad guy in this situation. So don't give him that. Okay, take the high road, be the better person and work on yourself and your own issues and just love your kids so much and foster this non-judgmental, open, supportive, loving environment with them so that they feel comfortable to share with you. And then you can decide what you need to do based on that. I, I, just, I can only imagine that must be really, really hard. So I'm sending you a big hug.